What's going on guys? So in this video, I'm changing out my Clockworth Sport windshield for a Freedom Shield Turing model 14 inch dark smoke. This one's okay, but there's a lot of creaking, there's whistling, uh, it's very flexible. When I go down the road, I can see it vibrating, uh, stuff like that. And I want a little bit more wind deflection coming off from the front and this cutout, it, it, it's okay. I'm just not really happy with it. So got me a new Freedom Shield. We're gonna pop this thing on here, switch this one out and uh, take a look and see how it looks. So back in a minute. Okay, so I got the camera all spun around. Uh, hopefully this gives you a good view. You know, I'll be stepping in front of it a couple times as I get to different screws, but what I've done is I've placed a towel over the back side of the inner fairing, and then I used some blue painter's tape along here to just cover up these areas where these screws I'm gonna be taking out, just in case my screwdriver wanders and it kind of slips off. I, I don't want to scratch up the paint on the fairing. So I've got that in there. This is my initial Clockworks 14 inch sport Turing dark uh, that I have on there. And then I'm going to switch this out for this new Freedom Shield. And this is the 14 inch uh, Turing model dark smoke, not sport. So this is more of a vertical uh, height here, pretty close to the same deflection. It comes packaged up in you know this nice plastic wrap like that, really well sealed. On the back, they've got instructions that tell you test ride it, how to windshield, how to care for the windshield, and stuff like that. So you can put this on and leave all this tape on it, and then ride it for a little bit, see how it feels, because they didn't tape over the holes. And then as long as the tape is still all on there, the plastic wrap and all that stuff, you can send it back and just pay for shipping and either get your money back if you don't like it or get a different one if you want to try, you know, 15 inch or 17 inch or whatever else the other measurements are or a different color, right? Maybe you don't like the color and the way it looks. But just looking at the two in comparison, you can see the shape here of the sport. And then if I set this over kind of where it's going to be, um, this is about an inch taller than my Sport, even though it's still a 14 inch. And it's got a little bit more enhanced scoop uh, for wind deflection, which should break off some of that helmet buffeting I'm getting right at the top of my head. And the thickness on this thing is insane. Um, I don't know if you can see just how thick that is, but I mean, it's, it's thick. And compared to this, uh, a lot more ply less pliable than than this is to where this kind of flexes around so what I'm gonna do now is get this ready to go but what I do want to show you what comes with it is of course the shield and it comes in a big box with a lots of popcorn styrofoam it comes with an envelope taped to it with your invoice in there so you know what it was model number and everything else with a nice thank you note saying we know there's a lot of other companies that could have purchased from. We just wanted to say thank you for choosing us. That's pretty cool. And then it also comes with a sheet of instructions that talks about you know how to put it in, which way to put it in, how to tighten it up, windshield care again on here. So, and then that's it. You get the windshield, copy your invoice and that. The only tool you really need is Phillips head screwdriver. Um, I've got these horizon lights on here right now, so I have to take those off, which is again why I have the tape and all that, because these are gonna flop over on the wiring. And then there's four screws underneath, pops it out, puts a new one in, puts it back. So real simple, let's get it going. So I'm gonna start out by taking off these horizon lights. It's kind of a three piece configuration that goes on here. You got this little itty bitty set screw back here. And then this black cover that pops off and goes over. Set that over here. And then you've got the LED light and a rubber seal behind it. So we're gonna take out this first screw. I could do this with an electric screwdriver and make it a little easier and faster, but it really doesn't take that long to unscrew four screws, right? So not a big deal with that. 
All right, so I got those all loosened up. I'm gonna hang on to them while I pull these out, put them in my hand. All right, so then that releases the LED light and the gasket that goes underneath. And I'm just gonna fold this back over along the back and I'll clean up the cool little bug guts that are on the back of that. Then we'll go over here and do the same thing on this side. Pull out this little set screw. Hang on to it because it's a small little guy, that's for sure. And then same thing, pull this forward. Takes off the color for that side. Again, exposes your LED configuration. So let me jump over on this side, try not to be too much in the way. Same thing as the other side though, you just unscrew. Essentially the same four screws that you use all the time for your windscreen anyway. Okay, those are out. So I'm gonna hang on to this so it doesn't flop around. My hand. That's that. Now, because I don't have anything holding on to it, I'm gonna assume that it's gonna be okay and not fall because it's in the seal from the pressure. So I'm just gonna very quickly flip this over, kind of keep a quick launch, jump or die attitude on it. And then once those screws are out, you just pull this thing off because it's kind of stuck to the rubber. And there's your old windshield. Gonna take advantage of having this off right now because you can see I got a little bit of bug splatter that got up in there and that's also a case in point is if I've got a windscreen or windshield down here behind this seal, how am I getting bug guts back here? And that kind of points towards kind of the reason why I might be hearing some whistling and humming coming through that with the clockworks. So we're gonna Get that out of there. All right. And then again, because I have it off, I'm gonna reach up underneath here and pop up my vent, pull that out. You don't have to, to do the windscreen, but I'm gonna do it so that I can clean all up in here since I have it out, right? So you can see from writing and bugs flying up underneath the scoop, we're gonna stick this guy up in here, and get that all going in. Okay. All right, so we got that cleaned up. Next thing we'll do is we'll pull off, we'll pull off all this plastic wrap. I'm not gonna do a test ride. I'm pretty confident that I'm gonna be happy with it because I measured it all out. Plus I have the Freedom Shield on my Heritage that I put on and switched out from a Clockworks. So pretty happy with their product. This thing is wrapped really nicely. Okay, so that was wrapped really well. So that's a good thing. Got some smudges on here that I'm gonna take care of, uh, especially down here in the backside before I try to put it back on. Usually I wear gloves with this, but I didn't because I had to hang on to it. So I'm just gonna clean up the lower edge that I can't get to of that stuff and if we take a look at how it's going to sit it's going to sit right there and you bend it forward as you put it on and that's how it sits so already see a difference i uh, can already tell that that's a 
a much higher level. Holes line up once you push it down into place, so that's good, good craftsmanship and all that, so good. All right, we're gonna set this over here. I'm gonna put our vent back on because we got it all cleaned out. All right, so that tucks in back there, tucks in there, tucks in there, and then just snaps down in. Just like that. Check my operation. Okay, that's good. All right, so we got our vent back in. Now we're gonna grab a couple of the screws just to kind of get it ready and hold it while we get it in place. Because we don't want it to fly off on the ground when we're trying to get everything all lined up. So, okay, so now I'm gonna set it in place. I cleaned the back of it off. I'm just gonna put the screw in here. Just finger start it, just to hold it. So nothing happens to it. And their instructions recommend you start from the inside and work your way out so you can flex it in place. So keep that as my in mind as you do that. So I'll put this side down. Find my screw hole right there. So I've got that started. I just want to check to see, you know, how it's how it's going to fit. Once we tighten everything down on both sides, then we'll push that down up against that seal, and we should be good to go. Of course, get rid of all the fingerprints that are driving me crazy already. Uh, there's going to be more, so there's not much I can do about it at the moment. All right, so the way this one goes in my scenario is the gasket goes back, the light goes over it, and then we start in the front per the instructions, recommendations with the front screw. So we'll get this one working on screwing in here. Okay, so we get that in there. You can see I got two screws. It's loose. It's just kind of hanging on. And then we gotta do the same thing on this side. We have to pull off now that other, that other screw. So we can get it ready to go back in. And again, they want us to start from the middle out. So that's how it's gonna sit need to have the gasket and the light. And I'm just gonna do this to get this one started. So push that down to hold it while I get it in place. Until I start to feel that one bite. Do the same thing on this side. Of course, I'm going to tuck in this wire, hopefully. And line that one up now. It should line right in. Just like that. Okay. Now we got the, the lights on. There's no gap here, which is great. I'm going to line my gaskets so that the retaining strip sits nicely. And then we're gonna tighten from the inside out per their instructions, so. All 
Again, these don't have to be super, super Magilla Gorilla tight. They just tight enough so they don't vibrate out. Plus this has that cover that's gonna go on over it. So even if they vibrate loose, they can't come out because that cover's blocking them in. It's a bonus, right? Okay. So now that I'm set here by the seal, I'll go ahead and tighten this guy down. That. And then push this down, make sure the seal's looking good. I'll tighten this one down. Okay. So now we have that on. Now I'm gonna clean all this up right here because I'm gonna be putting the uh, metal covers on. So I don't wanna have anything there. So now we grab our metal covers and these just hook right on the front of those horizon lights and this little itty bitty set screw that you wanna make sure you don't drop goes and holds the back end of this thing on. I have dropped this thing several times. Okay. And again, this doesn't need to be so super tight because it's only screwing in plastic. But now that's back on. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. Hook that on. And he's tight. And there you have it. So it's installed. Now I'm going to clean up everything. All right, so now we'll do a quick test of the turn signals to make sure with all my movement I didn't botch anything up. So we'll turn the bike on. Running light, white running light looks good. Turn signal, sequential, looks good. Turn signal, sequential looks good. Looks like it's good to go. And then now, just pull off your tape. Pull out my safety towel. And then just wipe it where the tape was. Tape comes off real easy, it makes it real nice. It's just blue painter's tape you can get at any hardware store. Just like that. And that is the new 14 inch Turing style dark smoke uh, freedom shield install. So hope this was helpful. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'll let you know how it works out. I'll be doing some test rides on it. I'm actually going on a ride this weekend. So we'll see what's happening and uh, we'll let you know. All right, take care. Okay, so here we are testing out the new freedom shield Turing model 14 inch with the dark tint. So I've got my face shield cracked open and I can feel some air towards my eyes a little bit lower than my head uh, we'll know more when we get on the freeway to see how it feels how it deflects the air but right now I definitely feel a lot less whipping around the sides 
where the sport model clockworks had the indents down on the sides so we'll see what it's, what it's like when we get some highway speeds going on it but right now it feels pretty good my head's not banging like it was before when it hit me at the top of the forehead I just feel the air through the top of my uh, face shield where before it was going up underneath the scoop so I don't know if you can see the airflow is right here so all right we're about ready to jump on the freeway so we'll test this out get up to freeway speeds with the face shield cracked and then I'll shut it uh, once we get up to a good amount I want to see how it sounds uh, with the new windshield on the front the freedom shield We'll see what kind of buffeting we get. Alright, so here we are, freeway speeds. About 90 with the face shield cracked. Now I'm going to shut it. So now we got the face shield closed. And around 90 on the freeway speeds. Buffeting is good on my head. I don't feel the same amount of uh, head whip like I have before. So that's good. I can feel it jumping off the top of my head, but not whipping through the top of my head, so that's good. I feel a lot less buffeting on my shoulders where the sport wrapped around and I had that. So that's nice. Uh, I only feel it like on my sleeves, so it's doing a good job of redirecting that over. Pretty happy with it, I gotta say. Turing model, 14 inch, dark smoke. 